Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the May DSS board meeting for the Pitt County DSS. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And for a moment, we're gonna observe a moment of silent prayer and silent meditation. Okay, thank you. Do we have any public comments? Thank you. Okay, so we need to adopt or revise today's agenda. Any? So move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to the minutes of the previous meeting in April. Um, any changes, any revisions? Everybody okay with it? I'll make a motion to approve the April 2023 minutes. Okay. Second. Second. All approved? Uh, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Director uh, Sharon Rochelle to recognize new hires and retirees. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to take just a few minutes to introduce our um, new employees as well as our people that will be retiring soon. Um, and what I'd like to do is to begin with our new employees um, to have, as I call your name, come up to the podium. Um, sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot, but we, we want to see you and get to know you. But if you'd come up to the podium, introduce yourself, um, talk a little bit about where you came from, what you've, what you've done before, and what you're going to be doing here in Pitt County. So, um, let's see. Nikki Thompson? Oh, she knew she was going to be the first one. Welcome, Nikki. Where do I Right there. <coughs> Going to get it over with. <laughs> Nikki Thompson. Um, I started April 17th with Pitt County Social Services. I have 19 years. I was working with between Pitt and Greene County Schools. Um, got a little rough with the children, attitudes, and decided it was time to make a career change. I'm going to make this short and sweet. Um, I decided back in like April to talk to my principal and tell her it was a little bit too stressful for me. I had lost my dad the year before mm -hmm. and it was just too much for me. Mm -hmm. um, did my resignation, gave her 30 days, didn't know what I was gonna do next, but I just couldn't push myself to keep doing the school thing. Um, the day I resigned, Sonia Scott called me. Oh. And I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was in my classroom talking to my kids for my last day, and I looked down and I saw DSS. And I went to holler, and they was like, "Miss Thompson, what's wrong with you?" I said, "Baby, it's DSS." Come, they said, "What are you calling me for?" <laughs> I said, "It's for a job." They said, "Okay, Miss Thompson." They didn't want me to leave, but they knew it was too stressful for me. And I, they still text me, so I keep in touch with them. It has been amazing working here. I'm so glad I had this opportunity. I love it. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, welcome. Now, I like Thank to hear an employee you. say welcome. that. Welcome. Yes. welcome. Absolutely. We're that glad to we, have you. That means we're going to keep her a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Shania Reddick. Welcome, Shania. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? <laughs> Sorry. I know. I know. Shania, she did better than Shania. I would do. <laughs> uh, my name is Shania Reddick. Oh, so I sorry. came from Lenore County doing Medicaid. For a couple years, and I'm now part of Pitt County Child Care mm -hmm. Subsidy oh, wow. Unit, and I'm excited about my new journey with Pitt County. Oh, my. Welcome. Welcome. Well, we're Thank excited you. to have you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Yari, I'm probably going to say this wrong, Yari. Carano, how'd I do? Carino. Carino. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm two for two. <laughs> Um, I was actually working at the clerk's office here in Pitt County for about eight years doing juvenile stuff um, and now I'm a paralegal. Pull your mic down oh. so that the public can hear you. Uh, now I'm a paralegal doing CPS and a little bit of APS. Perfect. Thank you. We're Welcome. happy to have you. Thank you. Okay, Shannon isn't here, correct? Yes. Okay. And, ah, oh, Inez Black. Mm -hmm. Hello, 
Hello everybody, I'm Inez Black. This is not my first time coming up here. I started in February and I just stepped into the new role of the business officer too. Um, and I'm glad to be here, a lot to learn, but I'm excited about the challenge. Thank you. Really? Yeah, welcome. No challenge, just a slide. <laughs> <laughs> And Ashley, which of the retirees are here? Joyce. Joyce. Okay. And I'd like to call Joyce Whitaker to the front. Uh, in the middle. I am in the middle. In the middle. Oh, you don't want me here. Oh, you're retired. <laughs> I'm here. I'm in the middle. I know. I need a real recognition to Joyce Whitaker and to honor her for her distinguished 19-year career with the Pitt County Department of Social Services. And whereas Joyce began her career on October 6, 2003 as an emergency social worker, one. On November 9, 2003, she was transferred to a social worker one and finally, on June 21, 2015, she was transferred to a social worker two until her retirement on May 31st, 2023. Whereas Joyce has proven herself to be a valuable asset to Pitt County Department of Social Services with a vast knowledge of the department's policy and procedures. And whereas Joyce has worked constantly for the betterment of children and families of the Pitt County Department of Social Services and the community. And whereas the Pitt County Department of Social Services wishes to express its sincere appreciation to Joyce for her dedication to the outstanding performance of her duties during her tenure. And whereas this proclamation is presented to Joyce to serve as a reminder that although she is retiring, she will always be remembered as a valued employee dedicated to both her position and our community. Now therefore, Sharon Rochelle, Director of Pitt County Department of Social Services, on behalf of our governing body and the citizens of Pitt County, do hereby present this proclamation to Joyce Whitaker as a testimonial to the faithful and dedicated services which she has performed for the past 19 years, and our best wishes for continued success and happiness in the future. And don't be a stranger. Congratulations. Joyce, are you going to stay to remain in Pitt County? Are you a resident here in Pitt County? No, ma'am. Edge County. <laughs> but I love Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right to go home. <laughs> it's right down the creek. Right down the creek. That's right. Okay, so items for report. We have Rhonda Dawson for permanency planning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I've been asked to, I guess, talk because May is National Foster Care Month, um, and this year's theme is Strengthening Minds, Uplifting Families. Um, the need to take a holistic, holistic and culturally responsive approach to supporting mental health needs of those involved with child welfare. Each May, we take time to acknowledge foster parents, family members, volunteers, mentors, policymakers, child welfare professionals, and other members of the community who help children and foster care find permanent homes and connections. We use this time to renew your commitment to ensuring a bright future for the youth in foster care and recognize those who make meaningful differences in their lives. 
National Foster Care Month is an important time to raise awareness on issues related to foster care, to celebrate those who are dedicated to serving our children, youth, and families. Children in foster care need the same things every other child needs, shelter, safety, love, compassion, and guidance. They also need an abundance of patience and understanding from people who will love them unconditionally the because they have, <laughs> through no fault of their own, been through traumatic circumstances in their life. Um, for this, um, for the Foster Care Month, we are having some celebrations. This morning, we had our fruit, coffee, and muffins for Foster Care Month, um, where some of our partners came, Miss Nelson came, and some of our other partners who have partnered with us, including our Bridges, um, ECU, um, just different programs that have worked with us. And we are also going to be having an event this Saturday for our foster parents and for our relatives who are non-licensed, um, for them and the kids to come to at Space Cadets from 3 to 6 um, to show our appreciation for all the hard work they are doing with the children that we have. Um, one of the things that I would like to just reiterate with the theme of this year is um, Mental health and behavioral health is one of the largest unmet needs across the state um, for the children in foster care. Um, some of the things that we are trying to do here at our agency to work with the children and families that we have in our community is we do have um, an LCSW who's provisionally licensed. Um, she should have be fully credentialed by the end of October. She has and will be rostered to be able to do trauma-informed cognitive behavioral therapy by the end of June. Um, she has gone through RPC resource parent training um, through UNC, and that is a training that is done with our foster parents to help them see and learn about trauma and how trauma affects children and how it affects behaviors. And a lot of times that the behaviors that children are having aren't necessarily behaviors, but more in line with the things that they have been through. Um, and as of today, she is trauma-informed, comprehensive, clinically certified to complete TICAS, which is a more in-depth, comprehensive assessment that um, can be done on our, with our kids. Um, in doing that, she also works with our families um, before they get to foster care. So she's able to work with them from intake all the way through adoption if that is what the need is. Um, so that's one of the things that we're trying to do in-house as it relates to working with the children and families. Um, the hope is, is that the program will continue to grow um, for us to be able to do more of that in-house to meet some of, some of the unmet needs that we have. Um, we continue to build our partnerships um, within the community. We have about, well, as of yesterday, we had 208 children, and we're taking, there's going to be a new one added to that today. Um, so we'll have 209 children in custody, and we have 25 foster homes right now that are licensed um, for Pitt County homes, and all of our homes have children in them at this time. Um, so we're continuing to partner. Um, we have several children that are in what we call our respite homes because they do need those higher level of care. And we're working with um, our community partners to try and find an appropriate place for those youth. Um, so those are kind of the things we're working on. We try and have, as far as the staff to take care of them, obviously we have at different events. We have EAP. Um, we encourage them to take care of themselves with self-care and with us, Ms. Rochelle, being willing and encouraging remote days and the four 10-hour days for the staff, I think that has also been helpful um, with the cases and with the children and families that we're working with today. Question. Do you keep a waiting list for either the parent list or the Foster care. I was reared with foster care. Yes, ma'am. That those were my brothers and sisters. So I was just wondering, do you keep a waiting list? Of, of 
a waiting list for people that want to be foster parents? Yes, or yes, ma'am. Um, we always we typically advertise when we're starting to take referrals again, and if we get contacted and folks are needing or wanting to go ahead and be licensed, like right now before we're ready, we usually do a class in the spring and a class in the fall. And if they want to go ahead and do it, and rather than waiting on the spring or the fall, we go ahead and refer them out. So they can have the class done anywhere but get licensed here, or we can do their class and they can get licensed through that agency. So how do they contact you if they're interested sitting in, out in the world? Um, a lot walls? of them start with the website, and if they get funneled to me, then I typically refer them to my licensing supervisor, who is Chandra Mewborn, or I talk to them myself. Um, they find us through different connections that they form in the community. Um, Chandra is very involved in the community mm -hmm. and with building those relationships and partnerships. So a lot of times word of mouth starts getting people. And so a lot of times that's how we get things. But prior, prior to COVID, we would do more recruitment events. But once COVID started, it kind of took away some of those recruitment events that we could do. So let's give the public a telephone number because in my area, very and everyone does not have a computer to search yes, website. If I had a telephone, I would call quicker than I would try to go on yes, the computer. Yes, ma'am. So website. I'll give you two numbers. Um, Chandra Meborn, she is my supervisor um, for licensing, and her number is 252-902-1244. And I'll also provide my number, um, Rhonda Dawson, 252-902-1227. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? And don't go anywhere, Rhonda. I have another proclamation. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> sure. State of North Carolina a proclamation. Whereas the youth of North Carolina are our most precious resource and hope for the future, and all children deserve a safe, loving, and nurturing place to call home. And whereas there is approximately 10,150 children and youth in the foster care system, and approximately 841 young adults ages 18 to 20 in the extended foster care in North Carolina. And whereas the purpose of foster care is to provide temporary, safe, secure, and stable homes through the compa compassion and nurturing of a foster family or kinship family. And whereas foster families and kinship families open their homes and hearts to children whose families are in crisis and play a vital role in helping children and families heal and reunify while launching children into successful adulthood. And whereas we encourage North Carolinians to think about how they can meet the need for more foster, kinship, and adoptive families. And whereas there are numerous individuals, communities, and public and private organizations working to increase public awareness of the needs of children, both in foster care and exi exiting foster care, and of the enduring and valuable contributions made by foster and kitchen families. And whereas Foster Care Month is an opportunity to recognize the foster parents, kinship families, child welfare professionals, and advocates working to ensure children's safety, permanence, and well-being, and to spread awareness on behalf of the thousands of children in foster care in North Carolina. And whereas the state of North Carolina encourages residents to volunteer their time, energy, and talents on behalf of children in foster care, and their biological families, kinship caregivers, and foster care during this month and throughout the year. Now, therefore, I, Roy Cooper, Governor of the State of North Carolina, do hereby by proclaim May 2023 as Foster Care Month and May 2nd in Foster Care Awareness Day in North Carolina 
and commend its observance to all six. Okay, now we have um, Teresa Sampson our, to do our economic services update. I just, I just want to make a note that I'm going to, usually um, Brian does our updates, but I'm trying to get different people from within the department to come up and do that so that you become familiar with them and um, they have the experience of being able to come and present to the board, so. Oh, that's wonderful. Absolutely. Good afternoon. I'm Teresa Sampson. I'm the intake program manager. Um, in economic services, we serve, of course, you know, the public for food stamps, Medicaid, and long-term care, CAP, SA. And we had a program called Low Income Assistance for, with Their Water. That program's ending, the LEWAP program's ending May 31st. Once May 31st hits, if the application hasn't been approved and there's no more money, we can't give them anything, unfortunately, after May 31st. That program um, serviced 2,887 people with their, their water issues. LEAP has also ended, and as of April 30th, the automated LEAP payments were 1,536 families were served for any age over 60. They approved 2,122 of the other, and they denied 1,440. So overall, as of April 30th, they approved 3,658 families for the LEAP program. For food stamps, Food stamps is a bear. <laughs> As of April 30th, we took in 1,329 applications. Of those applications, 374 were called late recertifications. That's where people who are already certified for food stamps didn't submit their recertification timely. It was due 331. They have until 430 to submit that recertification. It then becomes an application for our recertification team. We have two girls to do those. That's about 15 a piece. It's not doable. They do the best they can. In the month, they processed 1,327 overall applications. 274 of those were the late recertifications. As of April 30th, we had six applications that were still overdue. Medicaid, we took in 336. That will increase because the waivers are ending as of June 30th. Uh, everybody that has been extended over and over and over again that may not have been income eligible for Medicaid, we'll start, we'll start seeing them lose their Medicaid and coming back through that front door, which will increase what we see, unfortunately. <clears throat> they process 625 applications. A me Medicaid application, a MAGI application counts each individual as an application. So you could have one application with three people on it that counts as three applications when you're processing them. That's sometimes why you see such a large amount compared to what we took in. As of April 30th, we had 96 overdue applications still. 94 of those are long-term care. Long-term care currently has six positions. Out of those positions, one is out on extended leave, two are vacant, two are barely making it because one is fairly new and the other one's been here a while. They're struggling. As a result, SA and CAP no longer has limitations as to how many people can apply. There's not slots anymore. You can just, everybody can apply if you're income eligible they're eligible. So SA and CAP has more than tripled in what it used to be. Back when I used to do it, you had 200 for SA. 
they're in the 600s and they just keep on rising because of the change in policies. The recertification food stamp team took in 1,501 recertifications in the month of April. They processed 1,276 of those. 225 of those unfortunately went overdue and they're trying to get them done. The Medicaid research for family and children and adult Medicaid were extended up and through to April 31st, or May 31st, I'm sorry. As of April 30th, the workers had to, st they've been working the ones that are due as of June 30th. They had, there was 2,690 applic or recertif MAGI applications that were due. They've worked up 1,307 as of April 30th. Adult Medicaid has 573 recertifications that need to be processed. Those also include long-term care. SA had 34, and they can only work those one month in advance. Medicaid, you can work two months in advance. SA, you can only work one month in advance. Currently, our, our department has seven vacancies in intake. Two of the, well, two of those will have technically been filled. They're supposed to start April, May 30th. We're hoping they come. That leaves me with five in my department. All are Medicaid. Three of those are adult Medicaid. Redetermination has three vacancies, two in long-term care. They have two food stamp workers that they just hired. One is supposed to start on the 15th and one is supposed to start on the 22nd. And Family and Children has one vacancy. Quality unit, they have one in customer care, an income maintenance technician, and they have a lead worker position that will be vacant as of 512 because she was promoted. In my department, every one of my workers have been promoted within this agency. Good for them, bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, redetermination has been working one Saturday every single month. Those girls come in and work 6 to 12 trying to stay on top of those recertifications because there's just so many. I know there's budget talks, I know money's an issue, and I know we've had a lot of vacancies, but it's hard to get good candidates. And we're not, get, we used to get hundreds. We're lucky now if we get 20. And then we're lucky if they come in for the interviews. I've talked to people at the state, they're having the same issue. So it's not just Pitt County, other parts of the county are Everybody across the state's having the same issues. Um, as of this morning, we had 710 food stamp applications. Of that was 265 of those late research that we still had to process. We had 1,007 Medicaid applications, and 105 of those are overdue. Those are out of the workers' hands. A lot of our applications are pending disability. Hopefully when the extension goes through, or the, um, the Medicaid expansion goes through, that'll make a huge difference because a lot of these people are waiting to be deemed disabled that probably won't be, which is sad. They shouldn't have to wait for health insurance. So, any questions? Yes. Um, I like the fact that we, uh, our, esteemed director is, is doing, doing something new. The reports are different. Um, when you have statistics, I like looking at them. So I'm, I like to suggest that um, the board give us the statistics, and you can send them to us after, afterwards. Mm -hmm. But what a concern is uh, when we're, we are an oversight committee, and when we don't want to get into a precarious situation with the state. So when families doesn't get processed, I think I heard that, uh, does it impact them? That's my question. It I potentially don't could if we can't get them processed. Pardon? It could potentially impact them, yes. We've hired some Vanguard people to help with the food stamp process so people aren't going without their food or their Medicaid. Um, but yes, it can impact them. They could go to the doctors and the worker is still trying to process that application or that recertification. Because right now, they don't have to call them and do interviews. 
Whatever we can find electronically, we can utilize that. We send them requests for information. The workers do call them if they need something and say, hey, if you get that in here, I can process it quicker. But as of um, July 1st, every application that comes into that agency, the workers are going to have to interview. So that is going to put a, make it a little longer and co more cumbersome for them to process. How do you notify your people? They send them a letter in the mail, a request for information. They email them. They Phone call. call them. Mm -hmm. They're very aggressive in getting the information to try to get it processed. I ask that question because I know some people are still afraid to get out, uh, Ms. Rochelle. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, mm -hmm. um, at, even though I wanted the public to know it's not necessarily because of the our employee, but people are sometimes hesitant to, oh, to go to different places. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have a backup right. uh, and we get a process, lot of, and that's good. Right. We have a lot of our information emailed to the workers. They, you know, email me the information so I can process your case quicker. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Teresa. And I just want you to know that Teresa is from Oswego, New York. Where it snows more than it, well, as much in, as in Buffalo, right, Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a question about um, vacancies. Are we maybe trying to tap into some of these? I, I think the last couple of meetings, it was mentioned that we were starting to get some talent from other counties. Mm -hmm. Are we tapping into the new hires from those counties, or even there's a couple here, to see why they're coming to us and maybe use some of that information to try to attract even more their friends? I mean, I think they're new, so they're going to tell you why they why they came here. Right. So are we can we maybe look at exploring? I love that idea. How to steal somebody else's employees. <laughs> yeah. oh, in I mean, a nice I, way, I, yes. I, I, I didn't say that word. I said why they're coming to Pitt County. <laughs> and, and maybe just just find out and, and tap into to, uh, to their brains and mm -hmm. see if we can get more. Sounds like a plan to me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next is Deirdre Hill, um, Employment and Training Update. We're going to switch that up just a little bit, and I'm going to introduce Ms. Hill. So I'm going to do my presentation first, okay. and then I'm going to introduce Ms. Hill. Um, before I begin, I want to say congratulations to Joyce on her retirement. <laughs> we will miss you. And although... Um, as of today, Family Support Services was fully, well, we had no vacancy. She's going to ruin that. <laughs> so, but no, we're happy for you, and we, we appreciate all that you have uh, contributed to Pitt County. Thank um, you are. <laughs> Family Support Services consist of daycare, employment services, child support, Medicaid transportation, and crisis. But today we're going to highlight um, the child support, for, I will highlight the child support program and Ms. Hill will highlight um, employment services. So um, with um, child support services, um, okay, for as of March 2023, we have incentive goals. These are federal incentive goals um, created by the federal government. Um, and based on our performance, we receive incentive money each year based on our performance. As of March 2023, child support, we are we have met two of those goals, and we are on track to meet all three of those by the end of the physical year, which is June. Um, and again, our performance is our performance is based on money that we receive back from the federal government. So we try to excel in all of those goals. So staff is doing a great job there with those goals. Um, as of March, I'm sorry, as of April 2023, we, our self-assessment goals, those are goals that are designed and created by the state as far as a report card for the state. Pitt County is exceeding in all of those goals, case closure, enforcement, establishment, 12-month expedited, six-month expedited interstate, and review and adjustment, we are actually at 100%. Um, and so that is our goal as of April 2023. And I want to go back to the uh, previous screen. And as of March 2023, what we have collected as of uh, March 31st is $11,179,672. So 
So awesome job there to the child support staff. And then on the very last is our quality review part report card. Each month, the state, we have a, a continuous quality improvement specialist from the state office that comes to our office and do a mon monthly audit of at least eight to 10 of our cases each month. And as you can see, our overall average is 98.99. Um, staff received a score of 100% in all months from July to April, except for two months. Um, they scored a, a little less than that. So kudos to staff for their hard work and their dedication and commitment. Any questions? I don't, I don't have a question, Sonia, but I just want to make, um, first of all, when I get these reports every month, um, the state reviewer has nothing but accolades for Pitt County uh, Child Support Unit and really citing us as one of the best in the state. And so um, hats off to everybody that does this work. I also just want to make the point of the amount of money that's brought in. Um, that's only for part of the year, the number that Sonia showed you. But Sonia, do you have, I, I mean, and this would be a rough estimate, but do you have like um, an idea of what you typically would bring in for, for child support throughout for a 12 month period? For incentive money? So for incentive and or? Well, now incentive money, we usually range anywhere from 300000 to 400000 That's just based on performance. Okay. And that money is to be used for staff salary, equipment, training and education, anything that's directly related to the success of child support. And we're fortunate here in Pitt County, which very few counties have, we actually have a contract with our sheriff's department where we have deputies that's assigned specifically to serve papers here in Pitt County. So we're fortunate to have that. Now also, um, child support is reimbursed 66% of any expenses, salary, um, service fees, anything. I don't have the number for that. That's going to be an uh, Inez <laughs> um, number eventually. Um, but whatever money is spent on child support staff, equipment training, or whatever, we're reimbursed 66% as long as it's related to child support. So since you um, rely on this, um, the sheriff's uh, employees, yes, ma'am, deputies, to deliver that information, has there ever been has it has there ever been a problem with not being able to get it done in a sufficient amount of time no absolutely not we have we have a great uh, working relationship with the sheriff's department and we have team. for as many years as I've been in child support which is like 23 24 years we've had uh, we've always had a, a great relationship with them um, last year we did have, to, did have to modify our contract to reduce the number of deputies. We normally had five deputies and a clerk, and that wasn't due to anything with the um, sheriff. That was just a cost-effective decision. Um, the numbers, a lot of, poli of the policies with the child support program has changed over the last few years uh, about how we can issue papers and things like that. So the number of papers we we used to initiate have reduced drastically, and so therefore we were actually paying more for deputies than what we were actually getting in. So we had to reduce those down to three, but no, we've always have a had a great working relationship with the Sheriff's Department. Okay, thank you, yeah. thank you. So I'd like to take this time, to, I wanted to go first because I wanted to introduce Ms. Hill because she's kind of like what I call my quiet storm. <laughs> Ms. Hill is a program manager for the Child Care Subsidy Program and also our Employment Services Program. Um, they're located in a building behind Human Services Building, which is called the Annex. So she's the fire inspector. She's the safety inspector. Mm. She's our community liaison for NC Works, the Fatherhood Program, Pitt, Communi oh, um, Pitt wow. Community College. Good I, I know some stuff that I'm missing here, but I was just put on the spot to introduce her today. <laughs> but um, she's, she's kind of like the quiet storm. So I want to um, bring up Miss Hill to talk about um, employment services. Oh, that is good. <laughs> wow. Where does Thank the funds you come and from? good yeah. afternoon. Again, my name is Dee Where Hill, does the funds come? and I do manage the subsidy program, child care subsidy program, and the employment services unit. I'm here to uh, speak specifically on the employment services unit. 
Um, we're located in our little annex building, but let me just give you a little bit of information. From January to April, we had 803 people walk through the door. Wait a minute, I'm talking to the microphone. I want to oh. hear that last part. Okay. <laughs> From January to April, we had 800 people walk through our door. We have them sign in when they drop off information, sign in when they need to speak to someone in the building. So we are small, but we are powerful. So that's good. And we will miss Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm specifically I'm going to talk about the Employment Service Unit. That consists of three programs in itself. That is the Workforce Employment Service, the, um, the FNS Employment and Training Program, and our Child Support STEP Program. In 2022, Secretary Commerce Sanders lost an, uh, launched an initiative, the First in Talent innovation competition. A grant was awarded to Pitt County uh, NC Works and with collaboration of the following partners. Social Service Employment Services, Pitt Community College, Pitt County Economic Development, and Greenville ENC Alliance. We decided on, as we collaborated, that this grant would be called Career Fit first in talent. The following goals were to be met. Prepare NC workforce for career and entrepreneurial success. Prepare NC businesses for success and growth and attracting talent, um, t a talented workforce. Prepare communities across Eastern North Carolina to be more competitive and growing and attracting the talented workforce and businesses. Events, explain some of the events that have taken place. The Employer Engagement Conference on March 30th, where we had 58 employers attend at the Hilton. Uh, Secretary of um, Commerce Sanders did attend that as well. Community Research, uh, Resource Fair was held on April 18th. We had 20 vendors. We have a job readiness workshop that will um, be held on June 1st, and we will also have an expungement clinic, and that is to be determined on the date. We will also have our grand finale, because we want to get people prepared for our job fair, and that is to be determined as well. So the question is, how do we get that information out? We post it throughout the communities, and we also distribute it electronically to our community partners and agencies to share. As someone walks through the, our annex building, we have the, the information right in front of them. So give that out. As soon as you walk in, sign in. We're going to give you some information. Other community involvements and outreaches. We attended, the Employment Services uh, attended a recruitment event that was held with ECVC, which is one of our partners, on January 26th and also on April 13th. We did an informal event for resources available um, for justice-involved persons. We were invited by Judge Hazel Hazelton on April 16th. As a board member of the Local Reentry Council, um, staff also presented information about employment services held at DSS. Monthly, our outreach, uh, we have community outreach sources, uh, outreaches, and that's held in Bethel at the Work, Workforce Development um, Center, also at Farmville, the PCC location, at the Bernstein Center, and also at the Grifton Depot. In addition, um, our STEP program, which is the Child Support Employment uh, and Training Program, attends the Child Support Court um, weekly. Staff is also co-located at NC Works, so as anyone that may be receiving benefits would come into that office, they will then be met by one of the staff members and hopefully enrolled in our programs um, in order to find employment and education. I can go deep into the education part because we do offer 
um, free education as far as our funding is concerned. For ENT employment and training, we are one in 15 counties that have that program. Every year I develop a um, plan for the program that must be approved by the state. For the STEP program, I have to develop that program um, for, this, uh, for Pitt County as well. And we are, we are one of two in the state of North Carolina that has that program, that have the program. Um, one of the spotlights, one highlight, is also that one of our participants in the employment and training program was featured on the cover of the local community college course magazine. So we're very proud of that. Just some stats for the first quarter, um, 24 people were employed with the average uh, salary of 14, um, average pay of 14.25 um, and full time. Also with our STEP program, as Sonia had spoken about, um, with collections, because that is a dual self-sufficiency program. Meaning if the non-custodial parent um, begins work, then also the child will receive the child, the, um, the, the child support income to the household. For the last three months, we have collected $12,000. So that's more than what we would have had if the non-custodial parent would not be paying child support. Any questions? Very good. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Rochelle, we're going to the director's I report. <laughs> I, 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 um, excuse me, Madam Chair. Absolutely. I, I'm learning some things. I've been on this board quite some time. I'm learning some very descriptive and information on this board that we've never had before. And so kudos to you and your staff, their reports were, were just magnificent. I sure would like to read it, see it up close, but just looking. Oh, we can get into stats, it's not a problem at all. Yeah, excellent. because workforce development is very important. So, and thank you, Miss Mary, for saying that. And um, I, you know, I've been here, I think, almost seven months now. But anyway. It's, <laughs> um, you don't have to keep count. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just feel like I've been here. Um, I, and I, I'm, I'll just, I know I have to go into my director's report. But I, I just, the breadth and the depth of the staff that work for this department is unbelievable to me. And, and I've worked other places, so I, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. But they are so committed, try so hard, want to do things. Um, for the community and give back so much more than they get and I just I'm just so proud and pleased to be here um, and I can't think that I'd ever want to work anyplace else oh just saying <laughs> we don't want you to go anywhere yeah so anyway I'll just say that congratulations yes. to all of you it really is exciting to hear such a glowing report and thorough Okay, so I'll just kind of go through some of the um, issues or the things that I'm planning, hopefully. Um, so I finished, for my absence for the last couple of months, I was in, um, um, through the department, or uh, through uh, North Carolina School of Government. I've been in the public law employment class and um, every Tuesday afternoon from one to five for the last couple of months. But I've come away with uh, just wonderful information. And so one of the things that I think we need to kind of pull together is for our supervisors and staff to all to understand about what a disciplinary process is. And, and when I say that, I know it has a negative connotation, but it's really more about how do we, um, if somebody is struggling in their position, how do we make them aware of it and how do we provide a work plan for them to be able to improve? Um, but I, we're, I, I think there's a lot of question about how it's done, um, when it's done, and what I want to be able to do is take what I've learned from my um, class and be able to get us all doing the same thing the same way um, and getting people educated as far as um, 
you know, how to handle that particular thing. It's never an easy task because there's always some stress involved in it, but at least we'll, people will be aware of what to do, how to do it, and that's what I want to accomplish going forward. Um, the remote, remote work plan pilot update. Um, Oops, can I ask you something? Yes, ma'am. Um, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. About how much time would it take you to take your administrative staff through this program, the, um, the public law improvement program? They probably wouldn't need to go through all of that, but uh -huh. just I, what I wanted to do oh, is take, yes, take the portion of the disciplinary process of public employees and be able to provide that information to them. I also, there is a, a couple of really good books out there that have um, different examples of how you do, how you write somebody up. So it's more strength-based. They're not saying, here's all the things you're doing wrong, but talk about what they're doing right, but what they could improve upon. Um, and, and try to do it in such a way that it's um, more of a positive experience. Uh -huh. I mean, it does happen no matter where you work. Yeah. There are some people that just um, struggle and this might not be um, the place for them to work. But I always, whenever I've had to go through that process, um, and it's difficult to have those conversations, but I always tell the person, I know that you're very talented, I know you're very capable, um, don't take this as a failure. This is just not meant for you, but I think there will be things out there in your future that you've learned from here and that you can take forward. And Because um, I don't want them to feel like this is it for them. Yeah. So I, yeah. I want it to be a positive message. Make, and rather than a stressful situation. Right. Uh, how much time uh, will it take you to get them refreshed with all those things? So I am hope we're going to have... Um, a meeting over at the Ag Center. What, uh, Ashley, what date will be the supervisor and chief's meeting? The 16th. So I will do a training then. Um, I don't think it'll take long at all. I think it's pretty straightforward. And, um, and then at that point we can have some conversations about maybe examples of things people did or questions and we can learn from each other. That's what I'm hoping for. CNA for sing needs that you may need to have uh, when you do this, like um, is it, it, your budget straight for that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, it's going to be pretty reasonable because I'll be providing the training. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind okay. of built in. <laughs> All right. Because we do have a, a, a legal attorney uh, he, uh, in uh, the county uh, I think we have maybe more than one in the county's, um, what is it, personnel. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm finding some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Personnel roster, so. Okay. That might could help you. Thank you. Just talk to Janice. <laughs> I will. So, um, I would like to have a fall board retreat for all of the DSS board members. Um, during one of my uh, director's meetings, um, the, again, School of Government, uh, Christy, and her last name, it's, I can't, I want to say McNichol, but that was a movie star, so, but anyway, she's, um, she, she's very much involved with DSS boards and doing the training. Um, they have actually rewritten the board's uh, training manual, and so I um, went up to her and asked her would she be willing to come out and do a board training with us. Um, and we would provide books for everybody, but to have the opportunity to ask questions and she can give us the updates, what has, what has changed, um, you know, how the law has been, you know, changed and updated. So I thought it would be good for all of us to um, take place in that. And then I will make sure that everybody gets fed. And um, I would also like at that retreat to come up with, and this is really be your decision as a board, but what you'd like to see in the upcoming year as far as an agenda goes. You know, we're, I'm putting this together about things that I think are important for you to know, but I'd like to hear from you how you'd like to see that agenda arranged. And then if we can do that ahead of time, you're going to know each month what's going to be presented and maybe come with some, you know, questions or, you know, information that yeah. you have or more or to be able to provide out to your, the people in the community. So, right, great. Yeah, sounds great. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, so I think you probably... I'll pretty much know the budget update, but I'll 
I was able to present at least half of it and the other half Inez did for me. Thank you, Inez, if you're still here. Um, and I think, I, I think the point I was really trying to make with the um, Board of County Commissioners is that, yes, the Department of Social Services, we do, there's a lot of money spent locally, but I think what we bring in to the, to the community at least the, the numbers that I provided was three times more than what our budget was. And that wasn't even a comprehensive list. So I'm hoping, um, I think every, I think I, I was think able to- I think it'll be great for this boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, girl. Okay, <laughs> all right. So I, I wanna be able to educate them and um, let them be aware of what we do um, and the money we do bring in. Um, we actually, in your packet, you're going to see a copy of, let's see second to the last page, that for the fourth consecutive year, um, we've received an outstanding safety and health effort, um, which resulted in substantial reduction of injuries and illnesses. So I'm very, very proud, although I've not been here for four years, of what's been accomplished by the department. And I just wanted to be able to bring that up. And also, just to um, remind people that this is Older Americans Month as well. I think we're kind of fitting everything in, but I think maybe next month um, I'll have a little bit more information and have somebody be able to present a little bit. I know we've had people talk about our adult services program, um, but to kind of highlight them for next month, that's my goal, so. And that's it for me, unless you, you have questions. Something about remote, I think we missed oh, I'm sorry. So. What we're doing right now is, yeah, with the remote work um, pilot. So people are, ex we're, we're experimenting, and I've talked with um, the county manager at length about how we are able to expand this program. Um, so just a couple of things. What we're going to do at the chiefs and supervisors meeting is talk about what the expectations will be in being able to roll this out um, wider than what we have it now. Um, it will be a transition. It will be a time of we're kind of going to go department by department, making sure that the needs are met. And I'm going to be asking each um, division or unit to provide me with what that work plan would be. So in addition to procedures and policies associated with remote work, what their work plan is going to be, if there's going to be somebody in the office, what the coverage is, because I, I just know that um, as we roll this out, things are gonna come up and I just wanna make sure we cover our bases to the best of our ability. Not everybody will be able to work remote, so I think we're gonna see a combination of people still working in the office full time. I think a hybrid model and also a complete remote model. My hope is that we are not going to be needing a, a capital improvement project over at the other building, that we'll be able to use those offices differently than we do now and do hoteling where we're making a reservation to come in if we need to use an office. But if, it, if we can roll this out and have it a successful um, program, we'll be saving the county probably close to $20 million. So. That's significant. Yes. <laughs> that would be something that the board would love to hear. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, more to come on that, but I think so far I've gotten very positive Results, we did a survey, um, two thirds of the staff said that they really, the ones that have been participating have really enjoyed it. I think it gives people a work-life balance and I think in order for us as a department and the county as a whole to stay competitive, we need to start doing some things differently than what we've done so that we have um, things that we can offer employees to be able to wanna come and work here and stay here. Well, I tell you, our meetings are aired and people listening to you today, we should have a flock of applications. <laughs> we should never have a vacancy. Well, thank you. Because it looks very innovative. We're trying. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So do we have any board member comments? I say mine when they have any, when they come <laughs> up, uh, because uh, uh, I think it's good when people are presenting to know what the feel is mm -hmm. at the time. I'd just like to say welcome to the new employees and congratulations to our retirees and we appreciate having you here. 
Ms. Rochelle, and we are very impressed by your innovation and your willingness to explore new ways of doing. Serving the public. New ways of doing. Yes. So okay. we appreciate it. Anyone else? I'll just echo Sheila. Thank you so much to the new employees that have joined us, but also to uh, employees that continue to come every single day and stick this out. It's not easy. Absolutely. So thank you for staying. I'll just say uh, we've heard some great stuff today, and I think it's paying off with being able to get talent from other uh, counties. I think as long as we stay doing what we're doing, that's going to continue to happen. And some of these departments that are having issues with vacancies, you overcome that. I mean, I know the last couple of months there's been departments that have overcome that. Sonia just said that her department is full. She only has one vacancy due to her <laughs> retirement today. So stay the course and uh, we'll overcome it. I have one question to ask you. Mm -hmm. How is that your a deputy uh, position uh, uh, coming? You have uh, um, opportunity to look inside and outside. How is that coming? So Co I've received um, applications, and um, I think there are, are two remaining that the state has to qualify for me, and then I'll be able to set up um, some interviews and bring folks in. I think that'll help you look even prettier than you do today <laughs> and <laughs> fresher, too. Oh, thanks. Yes, because you work hard. Thank you. I'd like to say I appreciate the transparency the department is, is um, demonstrating. Um, it's, it's nice to, to, um, to hear the good and the bad. Um, and um, I, do, I agree with uh, Ms. Perkins Williams that having, the, having um, your presentations up so we can see, I'm, I'm a visual learner, so it helps me to see it and hear it. So I agree that it, it'll be easy, it would be easier to be able to see some of the information that's shared in that format. But again, thank you. Um, and um, is a motion in order? Entertain, a, entertain, entertain. <laughs> <laughs> entertain. I'd like to offer the motion to adjourn. Good meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. I never know when to raise See you next month. <laughs>